Good morning and welcome to Call Raw Tis Hope Ministries, where we believe in one God, one people, one faith. My name is Pastor Tamika Fiddler and I'm glad you could join us today. Uh, we have been walking through the Gospels and most recently the Book of John. Uh, last week we heard an awesome uh, teaching by uh, Pastor Tim, who walked us through uh, Galatians, and will continue to walk us through Galatians. So if you have not had a chance to listen to it, definitely listen to it and be encouraged. I've got some announcements before we jump into our message and prayer. Um, check out our website. If you haven't checked out our website already, uh, check out our web website at www.tishope.org. Um, a lot happening on there, a lot happening on, the, on there. If you have little ones, then you definitely want to check out uh, our Children's Corner, okay? That um, has not just stuff for our youth, but stuff for everybody. Uh, Minister Melissa takes her time every, um, every Sabbath to update that and have exciting things for your your young ones to read and uh, puzzles and songs and you name it. So uh, if you haven't checked it out, definitely go to our website and check that out. Uh, also, we have Bible study. Bible study happens every second and fourth Wednesday of the month, okay? So if you haven't participated in Bible study, it's a good time for us to be able to get together and fellowship and learn from each other, okay? You're not just learning and hearing from your pastors. You're you're sitting and you're fellowshipping with each other and being taught by each other. So we grow too, right? So come and, and do Bible study with us. We would love it. How can we pray for you? How can we pray for you? Do you have anything going on? Is there any way we can support you? We are the church. We are your extended family. By all means, we want to hear from you if we can support you in any way. So again, go onto our website, click the contact us button and reach out to us. Let us know how we can be of support. Um, we're a small church, but we do give community grants. Um, our only thing is if you received one this year, then you can't receive another one this year. Um, it's one a year uh, for the same person, but we do give out three per year. So if we can support you uh, in something, then reach out to us and let us know. Okay, so we are going to jump into the book of John chapter 19. But before I get started, let's bow our heads in prayer. Hmm. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord God, we thank you. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for giving us this time where we get to learn about you and hear about you and, and get encouraged in you and lift your holy name. Lord, I thank you for everyone who gets to tune into this message. Lord, allow it to speak to their hearts. Allow it to speak to their hearts and take over my words, Lord God. Guide me so it's all of you and none of me. We ask and we pray for your protection at all times as we live in a crazy world, Lord God. But we know we're not of this world. And we just look to you. We look to your guidance right now as we walk through the scriptures, Lord. And we love you and we ask for guidance in prayer in Jesus mighty name amen 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 so here we are we're gonna start um, in John 19 okay that's where our chapter is this week and um, set the scene right always set the scene where are we at what does this look like right now well minister Krishana took us through chapter 18 right John chapter 18 and uh, if we look, uh, we ended with Jesus being arrested and the crowd choosing to keep Jesus locked up and set Bar uh, Bar Barabbas, tongue tied, set Barabbas free, right? Barabbas, the one who we know is guilty. We know he's a criminal. And here the crowds chose to set him free um, and keep Jesus captive, right? So here we are, chapter 19. 
it's a long chapter. Try to bear with me as I read through, okay? And we'll pick up our teaching right after. And it says, Then Pilate had Jesus flogged with a lead-tipped whip. The soldiers wove a crown of thorns and put it on his head, and they put a purple robe on him. Hail, King of the Jews, they mocked as they slapped him across the face. Pilate went outside again and said to the people, I am going to bring him out to you now, but understand clearly that I find him not guilty. Then Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe, and Pilate said, Look, here is the man. When they saw him, the leading priest and temple guards began shouting, Crucify him! Crucify him! Take him yourselves and crucify him, Pilate said. I find him not guilty. The Jewish leaders replied, By our law he ought to die because he called himself the Son of God. When Pilate heard this, he was more frightened than ever. He took Jesus back into the headquarters again and asked him, Where are you from? But Jesus gave no answer. Why don't you talk to me? Pilate demanded. Don't you realize that I have the power to release you or crucify you? Then Jesus said, you would have no power over me at all unless it were given to you from above. So the one who handed me over to you has the greater sin. Then Pilate tried to release him, but the Jewish leader shouted, If you release this man, you are no friend of Caesar. Anyone who declares himself a king is a rebel against Caesar. When they said this, Pilate brought Jesus out to them again. Then Pilate sat down on the judgment seat on the platform that is called the stone pavement. In Hebrew, it's Gabbatha. It was now about noon on the day of preparation for the Passover. And Pilate said to the people, Look, here is your king. Away with him, they yelled. Away with him. Crucify him. What? Crucify your king? Pilate asked. We have no king but Caesar, the leading priest shouted back. Then Pilate turned Jesus over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus away, carrying the cross by himself. He went to the place called, called he went to the place called Place of the Skull, in Hebrew, Golgotha. There they nailed him to the cross. Two others were crucified with him, one on either side, with Jesus being between them. And Pilate posted a sign on the cross that said, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. The place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and the sign was written in Hebrew, Latin, and Greek, so that many people could read it. Then the leading priest objected and said to Pilate, Change it from the King of the Jews to he said, I am King of the Jews. Pilate replied, No, what I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they divided his clothes among the four of them. They also took his robe, but it was seamless woven in one piece from the top to bottom. So they said, Rather than tearing it apart, let's throw dice for it. This fulfilled the scripture that says, they divided my garments among themselves and threw dice for my clothing. So that is what they did. Standing near the cross were Jesus' mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. 
When Jesus saw his mother standing there beside the disciple he loved, he said to her, Dear woman, here is your son. And he said to this disciple, Here is your mother. And from then on, this disciple took her into his home. Jesus knew that his mission was now finished, and to fulfill scripture, he said, I am thirsty. A jar of sour wine was sitting there, so they soaked a sponge in it, put it on a hyssop branch, and held it up to his lips. When Jesus had tasted it, he said, It is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. It was the day of preparation and the Jewish leaders didn't want the bodies hanging there the next day, which was the Sabbath, and a very special Sabbath because it was Passover week. So they asked Pilate to hasten their deaths by ordering that their legs be broken. Then their bodies could be taken down. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the two men crucified with Jesus. But when they came to Jesus, they saw that he was already dead. So they didn't break his legs. One of the soldiers, however, pierced his side with a spear and immediately blood and water flowed out. This report is from an eyewitness giving an accurate account. He speaks the truth so that you also may continue to believe. These things happened in fulfillment of the scriptures that say, not one of his bones will be broken, and they will look on the one they pierced. Afterwards, Joseph of Arimathea, who had been a secret disciple of Jesus because he feared the Jewish leaders, asked Pilate for permission to take down Jesus' body. When Pilate gave permission, Joseph came and took the body away. With him came Nicodemus, the man who had come to Jesus at night. He brought about 75 pounds of perfumed ointment made from myrrh and aloes. Following, uh, following Jewish burial custom, they wrapped Jesus' body with the spices in long sheets and linen cloth. The, pallet, the place of crucifixion was near a garden where there was a new tomb never used before. And so, because it was the day of preparation for the Jewish Passover, and since the tomb was close at hand, they laid Jesus there. Okay, that is the end of our chapter. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word, and may we dive in. Let's take a minute to let all of that soak in, right? And we've heard it before. We've heard it in different ways uh, in the last three Gospels, right? And here we are again. Now we've walked through the Gospels and we've talked about what we see happening at this time, right? So we know we're coming to, well, we finally come to the end of Jesus' life, right? I want to explore prophecy and fulfillment. Most of the Old Testament is prophetic, okay? You've got prophecy in the New Testament too, but most of the Old Testament is prophetic, um, meaning it prepares us for what is to come. And the New Testament contains a lot of the fulfillment of the Old Testament prophecy. So if the Old Testament prophecy is preparing us for what's to come, that means the fulfillment is uh, basically us seeing what we were told would happen, happening, right? So we're seeing it happening. Uh, Fun fact, a lot of you guys um, like my fun facts. So here's a fun fact. There are at least, at the very least, 300 prophecies about Jesus in the Old Testament. At least 300, okay? So we're going to talk about some of those prophecies that we see specifically in John. Of course, we're not going to get to all those. Um, 
but here we are. So Leviticus talks in depth, the book of Leviticus, which is in the Old Testament, talks in depth about the five different types of sacrifices done in the Old Testament. One of those being a guilt offering, and that's what Christ represents. He represents a guilt offering. He represents a sacrifice for our guilty sins. Jesus is often referred to as the Lamb of God, the sacrificial lamb, because in the Old Testament, before Jesus died for our sins, the way of, to forgiveness was through sacrificing certain animals. So I want to take the time to point out that Jesus' crucifixion is happening during a very important time. And we know it's a very important time because um, Passover was big for the Jews. But not just that, the writer keeps saying that this is happening during Passover. And this had to happen because, you know, certain rituals were important before Passover. And they wanted to get this done. You know, they wanted to take the men down before uh, the Sabbath, right? So Passover is coming. Um, so here we are. Okay, I'm going to finish my explanation on why uh, Jesus is referred to as the sacrificial lamb. So here you are um, in the Old Testament, you have certain animals that were allowed to be sacrificed. Um, now, here we are during Passover. Passover was significant because it's the remembrance or the testimony of how God delivered the Israelites from slavery in Egypt by Pharaoh, right? If you remember the story in Exodus, then you remember how Moses told the Israelites who believed in God to mark their doors with the blood of the chosen lamb and the spirit of God would pass over their home and not kill their firstborn sons. Okay, so that's why Passover is significant. And that's why, um, you know, it's one of those uh, occurrences, one of those um, things in the Old Testament that um, God says is to be remembered, right? It's huge. We're supposed to remember it and pass it on um, even to our kids today. It's it's important, okay? So if you um, don't remember that story or if you never heard that story, then by all means, go back to Exodus. It's a good one. Read it, okay? Um, so here, it was called Passover um, just so the Spirit of God would not kill um, the firstborn in that home if the door um, frame was marked in blood, right? So it was specifically a lamb. So although other animals like, you know, a bull or um, goats uh, could be used in the holy temple for sacrifices, uh, specifically during Passover, they only used the blood of a lamb, okay? They only sacrificed a lamb. So, hence Jesus being our uh, Lamb of God, right? Our sacrificial Lamb uh, who died for our sins. So, let's explore the prophecies fulfilled in John 19 that show us how Jesus is the Messiah that the Old Testament followers of God said was to come. Now, I'm just going to go through a list of Old Testament prophecies that were fulfilled specifically here that you, um, that you see. I'm going to list them in the order they occur, okay? So I'm going to list them in the order that they occur in the Old Testament, not in the order that they occur in uh, John 19, okay? So follow along with me. I do encourage you to take notes so you can go back and read the scriptures for yourself. Um, it's huge. It's huge. We, as your leaders, uh, we come and we teach you, but we only have so much time. We encourage you to not take our word for it. Read your Bible. Um, go look up these scriptures. I'm just going to go through the scriptures and say, you know, um, how it was fulfilled, and you go back, okay? I'll also try to um, have them in the notes, if I can, on our YouTube website, okay? So follow along. The first is going to be uh, from Exodus chapter 12, verses 21 to 23. 
And that is where um, it says Jesus would be the Passover lamb, okay? It talks about the Passover lamb, and that's where Jesus would be the Passover lamb. Exodus chapter 12, verse 46, and Numbers chapter 9, verse 12, um, talks about none of the bones being broken, okay? So the Messiah that's to come, none of, and, and sacrifice his life for us, none of the bones being broken, and none of Jesus's bones were broken. Leviticus chapter 17, verse 11, Jesus would die and pour out his blood for the atonement of sins, okay? So the coming Messiah, which it comes to pass uh, here in John and our other Gospels, but I'm specifically talking about John right now, uh, would, would die and pour out his blood for the atonement of our sins. Next, we have Numbers chapter 21, uh, verse 9, Jesus would be lifted up. Psalms 16, chapter 16, verse 10, Jesus would not be abandoned to the dead, okay? So he would conquer death. Psalms chapter 22, verse 1, Jesus would be forsaken. Psalms 22, verse 8, Jesus would be mocked. Psalms 22, verse 15, Jesus' mouth would be be dry. Psalms chapter 22 verse 16, Jesus's hands and feet would be pierced. Psalms chapter 22 verse 18, lots would be cast for his clothing. Psalms 31 verse 5, Jesus would commit his spirit to God. Psalms 68 verse 18, Jesus would ascend to heaven. Psalms 69, verse 21, Jesus would be given vinegar for thirst. Okay, so if we think about it, everything in the Bible has prepared us for this very moment. Everything in the Bible has prepared us for this very moment. As in life, the things we see happening around us in our world is prophetic. It's prophetic. The Lord has prepared us for everything happening around us today. May you be encouraged in knowing that our Heavenly Father loves us so much that he allowed the sacrifice of of his only son. We were prepared for him to sacrifice his only son back, way back in the beginning of the Old Testament with Abraham and Isaac when it looked like God was calling Abraham to sacrifice his son Isaac, right? But that was prophetic. It wasn't meant to happen. It wasn't going to happen. It was showing us of the sacrifice that was to come, the ultimate sacrifice that was to come. It was preparing us for Jesus. It was preparing us for Jesus. Uh, it can be so easy to get discouraged by the scene, right? It can be so easy to get discouraged um, the whole time we've been teaching, we've been encouraging you to, to realize that, you know, what we see in front of us, what we see in the physical is, is not greater than what's being done in the spiritual. The spiritual trumps the physical. The spiritual is what is the priority, right? Because we can't see what God is doing, but we have to trust what he's doing and we have to trust that if we believe in him that everything that is happening good bad or indifferent is going to ultimately work out for our good right so i beg you to trust the lord today focus on jesus focus on his life focus on his story 
he conquered death. He conquered death. He conquered the ultimate fear that we all have today, right? The fear of death, the fear of death, the fear of not knowing what happens next, right? But we have to trust it. Our faith has us having to trust what we're being told in scripture, right? What we're being led to believe internally. Um, which means as believers, we share in that victory. We share in that victory. So our Savior, our Heavenly Father conquered death. We will too. We will too. We will go on and live everlasting life with him. But how will your life look? How will that look? Will you believe? Will you believe? Have no fear. Have no fear. Fear, saints. Have no fear, believers. Death is not the end for us. Okay? Oh, be encouraged. Be encouraged. If you are here and you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, but you want to, but you want to believe, you want him to be the Savior of your life, you can. Romans chapter 10, uh, verse 10 to 13 says, For it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with God. And it is by openly declaring your faith that you are saved. As the scriptures tell us, anyone who trusts in him will never be disgraced. Jew and Gentile are the same in that respect. They have the same Lord who gives generously to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved, okay? And that's from Romans chapter 10, verse 10 through 13. So if that's you, if you want to accept the Lord Jesus Christ into your heart as your personal savior, by all means, repeat after me. Lord, forgive me for all I've done known and unknown that is outside of your word help me live blameless in you help me trust you help me rest in you write my name in the lamb's book of life be the savior of my life and help me do better as i choose to walk in you Remember me and awaken the Holy Spirit in me that will allow me to see that I am not alone. We trust you, Lord, and we ask these things in Jesus' mighty name. <sighs> I hope you said this prayer. I hope you said this prayer. I hope you accepted Jesus into your life if you needed to. I hope you were encouraged by our teachings. I hope you go back and listen to ones that you might have missed. Um, if you would like to know what we're doing in the community, again, visit our website. If you would like to donate to us, you can do so on our website, or you can cash app us at dollar sign Cora Tis Hope. Okay, um, all of our all of our um, funds because we are not a physical church. Um, go towards helping the community, okay? So we do a lot of helping the homeless. We do a lot of helping people in the community. Uh, if you feel like you have a call, by all means, reach out to us. We like to encourage and uplift those who have a call on their lives. Uh, we want to speak life into that. Uh, we do give a ministry grant. That grant is once a year to an upcoming ministry uh, that needs support. So reach out to us. We don't walk this walk alone. We don't claim to be the only ones who are, um, are, are leading you. We want you to find leading everywhere you are encouraged, okay? We just say use us too, all right? So if you feel led, then, then definitely um, you can donate. Uh, and we are always in need of prayer. Pray for our ministry. Pray for the people we are touching. Pray for the people that we are encouraging so that we can continue to grow and we can continue to do more in the community, okay? We love you guys, your family, 
you're not doing this walk alone. Let us be your GPS to hope. Shabbat Shalom. Take care.